Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Handloader TV with me, your host, Jeremiah. And in this episode, we're going to be talking all about this Altera Arms Convergence Series rifle we have before us, and the cartridge it's chambered in, the 6mm Creedmoor. Now, before we move any further, there's a couple things that I should point out. This rifle should look familiar to people who also subscribe to Rifle Magazine, because this rifle was on the cover and there was a full write-up done by Patrick Mateen in issue number 324 of Rifle Magazine. I would highly encourage you guys to check that out because this is the exact same rifle he used, so it'd be great to compare his loads with our loads that we worked up and get a better overall picture for how this rifle performed, because by the time we're done with this rifle, we'll probably have put over 400 rounds through this particular rifle. This rifle was also featured in a video we did on the Ailer System 89 Ballistic uh, Coefficient Finding Chronograph. And we shot this at, I think it was 840-ish yards. Had some good success with that. In addition to that, Brian Pierce also covered Altera Arms in this issue of Rifle Magazine. This is issue number 326. He had a rifle chambered in 300 PRC, and he did a great job talking about the company, and there's plenty of details in these that we just simply won't have time to cover in this video. So I would highly encourage you guys to get either a print issue or go online to riflemagazine.com. Check out those articles. There's a lot of great information in there. Now let's go ahead and take a moment to talk about the 6mm Creedmoor as a cartridge itself before we dive into the nuts and bolts of this particular rifle. So the 6mm Creedmoor um, really started out, I guess credit has to go to John Snow and George Gardner of GA Precision Rifles, well known in the uh, rifle building community to make very accurate, very precise rifles. And they developed the 6mm Creedmoor essentially by necking down the 6.5 Creedmoor to 6mm. Now as far as the ballistics go, the 6mm Creedmoor is very similar to the 243 Winchester. And because of this, there's a lot of people that debate back and forth. Why do I need a 6mm Creedmoor when there's the 243 Winchester? And this really strikes up another controversy that I can recall between the 260 Remington and the 6.5 Creedmoor. The two cartridges are extremely similar and the differences almost mirror the differences between the 6mm Creedmoor and the 243 Winchester. There are some slight differences and things that I should probably point out before moving forward though. In comparing the 6mm Creedmoor to the 243 Winchester, the shoulder angle is slightly uh, different on the 6mm Creedmoor. It has a 30 degree shoulder compared to the 20 degree shoulder of the 243 Winchester. Also, the case length is a little bit shorter on the 6mm Creedmoor compared to the 243 Winchester. And one other notable advantage that I should probably mention when comparing those two cartridges is the 6mm Creedmoor does lend itself a little bit more to operating in the semi-automatic platforms out there. A good example of that would be the AR-10. It feeds a little bit better and it seems to run just a little bit more reliably in those semi-automatic rifles. Now, another difference between the 243 Winchester and the 6mm Creedmoor is twist rate. And that's kind of an important one. It's a trend that we've seen in the industry for a long time, switching from you know light stubby bullets all the way up to long, heavy bullets. And the reason for that is all about the ballistic coefficient. Everybody wants a high ballistic coefficient for flatter trajectory, long range shooting, and something that I think people often overlook the advantage of the high BC bullets is also in their margin of error. If you have a flatter shooting bullet or projectile, then you're going to have a higher margin of error. If you misjudge the yardage by 10 yards or the wind by a couple miles an hour, that will be a little bit more forgiving than a bullet with less uh, lower ballistic coefficient. So on that note, I think that pretty much sums it up. The 6mm Creedmoor has a twist rate of 1 in 8 as standardized by Sammy back in 2017. So it, all in all, it's a pretty good cartridge. And uh, if you don't have a 6mm already and you're in the market for a 6mm, I would say 
the 6mm Creedmoor is a good option. Where it gets a little bit more tricky is if you already have a 243 Winchester and you're trying to justify buying a 6mm Creedmoor, it might be easier, more effective to just simply swap the barrel or take that route. But of course, as always, that's up to the individual shooter. Let's go ahead and take a moment now to talk about the rifle itself. So starting out here at the back of the rifle, we have a recoil pad that's just under half an inch thick. We have a proprietary carbon fiber stock from Altera Arms. And personally, I'm a big fan of the green color. My own custom rifle has a green stock, so I think this looks very sharp. But they have many different color options available if that's not your thing. This particular rifle has a length of pull of 13 and a half inches, but of course that's configurable depending upon what the user wants. It's a little bit short for me, but it wasn't uncomfortable in any way to shoot. Um, I've already put about 100 rounds through this particular rifle just to get a feel for it and that kind of thing. And so far so good, but we'll talk about that more at the end of this video. We have a very nice fit and finish, taking a close look at where the action meets the stock. I looked and inspected the bottom metal here, the trigger guard, very closely, and the fit and finish is very good. You can tell they took the time to make sure that no bedding compound came up and oozed out because this rifle is uh, bedded. Uh, and they just did a, a nice job making clean, very nice lines fitting the action, the bottom metal, to the stock. A little small thing, but I can personally appreciate that. We have a Trigger Tech trigger inside here, which breaks cleanly and crisply on an average of five pulls on a Wheeler Engineering trigger pull gauge at two pounds, 2.4 ounces, with zero over travel on that trigger. It really is a nice trigger. I wish you guys could feel it for yourself, but it's one of the best triggers that I've personally uh, felt and used on the channel thus far. We have an aluminum bottom metal here with a hinged floor plate that can be actuated by this button here inside the trigger guard so you can unload the magazine there. Very quick, very easy. We have a simple two position safety and of course the rifle's been checked, we know it's empty, done that multiple times, but we have a two position safety here and the bolt can in fact be actuated with the rifle on safe. Personally like that, pretty simple. Pretty straightforward, easy to use. Trigger feels very nice. Yeah, that's a nice trigger. I'm rolling along to the fluted bolt here with a skeletonized bolt handle. Looks pretty sharp, very nice. It's also got some very practical features on here. It features dual ejectors, which is something you don't see on a whole lot of bolt action rifles. That's pretty neat. Talk about enhanced reliability, the two uh, ejectors there will definitely help. We also have an M16 style extractor on the bolt. Personally, I'm a big fan of those. They're very rugged, very reliable. In my own custom rifle build, which is based off a of Remington 700, I have that exact same M16 style extractor in there. So they work very, very well. Now probably the heart of any rifle is in the action itself. This is a convergence short action and it is wire cut with the EDM machine for the raceways, and that's why this bolt runs so smooth. I wish you guys, again, could feel it. You'll see it when I'm shooting it. It is just on ice. That bolt just glides right through that raceway. And the tolerances on it are really tight in inspecting things and taking feeler gauges out and things of that nature. This rifle has a lot of precision built right into it, if you will. They did a great job machining everything. The action is made from 416 stainless steel, and it also has a widened and lengthened ejection port here, which also, another point to make, is the magazine can accommodate cartridges up to an overall loaded length of 2.920, so you'll have no problems feeding longer, heavier, higher BC bullets, which makes a lot of sense in the 6mm Creedmoor cartridge. Rolling right along here, we have a match grade hand lapped barrel that is carbon fiber wrapped. It's 24 inches in length and has a one in seven and a half twist rate, which again makes a lot of sense because we have these longer, heavier, higher BC bullets to stabilize. The barrel is threaded at the end here, 5 eighths by 24, and we have an Altera V4 muzzle brake attached. And that should really help mitigate the recoil as well, and possibly more importantly, 
it'll allow us to spot our shots downrange and see where that bullet splash is and make corrections if need be. And you can't really see it here, but there was a sling stud here on the back of the rifle. And we have a Picatinny rail up front if you wanted to attach a bipod. It also has a QD socket on there to attach a sling as well. Last but not least, we have mounted and tally one-piece rings and bases. We have a Zeiss Conquest V6 3, uh, 3 to 18 by 50 millimeter scope on there. Really outstanding glass, high quality. It's made in Germany, mounted nice and low in these rings. Overall, a very good option. The rifle's bare weight is six, six-ish pounds, and the current weight of the rifle, as you see it with the scope and the Picatinny rail and the brake and the everything you see here is eight pounds, 13 ounces. And one last note to make is the rifle is guaranteed from the factory to shoot very, very nice groups. They guarantee all their rifles to shoot 0.5 MOA or better. This particular target was shot uh, by Cole H on March 25th, and the group size is about 0.2 inches on this guy. So no pressure on my hand loading and shooting ability. This is a three shot group though, we shoot five shot groups. So it'll be interesting to see how much that group opens up with barrel heat and that kind of stuff. But overall, these rifles are guaranteed to shoot accurate from the factory. And that's one really neat thing about Altair Arms. They really did their homework. They put a lot of time and effort and input from other people with experience into manufacturing and making these rifles. Their goal is to make an absolute precision rifle out of the box that's ready to go. And I think that's pretty neat. Now let's go ahead and jump on over to hand loading and we'll talk about exactly what we did to develop loads for this rifle and the six millimeter Creedmoor cartridge. When it comes to hand loading for the 6mm Creedmoor cartridge, it's a relatively straightforward and simple operation. It's just like 308 Winchester, 65 Creedmoor. If you've reloaded or hand loaded for any bottleneck rifle cartridge, the procedure is pretty much the same. So rather than walk you through step by step, what I'm going to do is give you a high level overview of exactly what we did to develop loads for this particular rifle in this video. Starting out with the components, we selected Starline cases for all of our brass needs. These were readily available at the time of filming, so I was able to get enough to work up quite a few loads for this particular rifle. And the ammunition is already preloaded and ready to go, so we can get out of here and hit the range. But Starline cases for all of the brass needs, Redding reloading dies, the three die set, they're deluxe set, so we have a neck sizing die, a full length sizing die, and a seating die with built-in crimping functions on it. You can see the bullets that we've selected and some of the powders that we're going to be used to testing. And of course, we won't be able to show you all of our results in this video because, let's face it, you don't want to watch me shoot 40 groups back to back to back. It would make for a two, three hour video at least. And we simply don't have time for that. So what we're going to do is take the best results, showcase those to you. And if you want to see all the results, the good, the bad, and the ugly, be sure to head over to LoadData.com. Look for the Handloader TV loads, 6mm Creedmoor. You can type Handloader TV into the search results and just find the 6mm Creedmoor hand loads. And you'll be able to see all of those results absolutely for either group sizes, the velocities we've got, um, which powder we use. The only thing you won't be able to see is the powder charges we reserve those for subscribers. So let's go ahead and real quick walk you through. I've got some Hornady Unique Case Lube. Take a little bit of that on my fingers, wipe it on the case. And since these are our brand new unfired cases, what I went ahead and did is I just neck sized those cases. Of course that one there is once fired. This is just for demonstration purposes. So the primer got knocked out. Now that that's sized, I went ahead and did that for all my brass. Each case was run up through the neck sizer. Even though it's new brass and I probably could have gotten away with it, I wanted to set my neck tension to about one and a half thousandths of an inch to two thousandths of an inch. And that way it would just ensure that my brass was consistent and as uniform as possible. And we're using a Redding T7 turret press here with the Creedmoor Sports Enhanced Turret Press Head. And it really, it kind of surprises me, this is something new that I've been playing with, 
it is a very, very solid system. If you take a close look at this, I'm going to screw this die down and put some cam over on this guy. That is a very rock solid turret head. The old one had a little bit of float in it, and this one seems to be pretty solid. So I'm pretty excited to go ahead and see how well this guy performs. And we'll put it to the test and run it through its paces in future videos. You'll be seeing more of this. So once I had finished neck sizing all my cases, from there I went ahead and primed them using a Frankfurt Arsenal hand primer. And then we went ahead and used an RCBS Matchmaster to dispense and weigh all of our powder charges, which will be accurate to four hundredths of a grain or so. Very nice dispenser there, but I've got some other things in the work. I have a Creedmoor Sports TRX925 Precision Reloading Scale over here off to the side out of view that I'm going to be doing some more testing with in the future. It's supposed to be accurate to uh, one hundredth of a grain, so very accurate. A little bit more precision than the Matchmaster, and I'm kind of curious to see how well that performs, so keep an eye out for future videos there as well. Once the powder was dispensed, of course, we went ahead and rotated our turret head over to our bullet seating die, and I simply seated bullets. You guys should all know how that goes at this point. We've showcased it plenty of times in our previous videos, and then that's pretty much all I did to develop the loads. Relatively simple and straightforward. So on that note, let's go ahead and take some of our ammunition and we'll hit the range. So as you can see, we're out here on the range now. We have the Altera Arms, chambered in six millimeter Creedmoor rifle benched in here. Target is downrange at 100 yards, exactly. An Ehler Model 35P chronograph is set up 10 feet from the muzzle to record all of our velocities. And according to the Kestrel 5700, the temperature is 58 degrees Fahrenheit. We have pretty much no wind. It's zero to at most, I'd say three miles per hour, coming from about the five o'clock position. Uh, humidity is 24.7 percent, altitude's 5,000 feet, and pressure is 25.24 in HG. So we're going to go ahead and start out by shooting some factory ammunition, and then we're going to work on over to our hand loads. So the first factory ammunition that we're going to try is this Hornady Varmint Express ammunition using an 87 grain Hornady VMAX bullet. And we got the target down range, benched in. Rifle's been warmed up now. Let's go ahead and put a group on the paper. Should be zeroed for this stuff too, or at least pretty close to it. Very nice. So the next factory load that we're going to try is this Black Hills Gold manufactured by Black Hills Ammunition. Uh, they make really high quality ammunition, good stuff. This particular one is using a 103 grain Hornady ELDX bullet. We'll put it on the paper and see how it does.
And that bolt feels really nice. Really smooth. Rolling right along with our load development here, we've swapped over to Shooter's World Precision Rifle Powder, a 39 grain charge with a 75 grain spear varmint hollow point. Starline cases, overall loaded length is 2.580 inches, and Winchester large rifle primers to ignite our powder charge. Target set up, rifles benched in, good to go. It looks like a mighty fine group from where I sit here. Next up in the queue, we're using H1000 powder from Hodgden, a 47 grain charge with 108 grain Hornady ELDX bullet, Starline cases, Winchester large rifle primers, and our overall loaded length is 2.790 inches. Can you tell I'm excited to just go ahead and get back behind the rifle and shoot another group? Here we go. Tell you what, there's a lot of pressure when you're shooting small groups. So as you can see, it's a new day on the range and the wind is currently blowing about from the four o'clock position at five to seven miles per hour. So a little bit more wind, unfortunately. Temperature is right at 49 degrees. Humidity is at 55%, which is pretty high for Arizona. We've got a storm blowing in and we're gonna try and beat that shooting today. 
and pressure is 25.08 in HG. A little bit lower than what it normally is and lower than what our previous conditions thus far in testing have been. So let's go ahead and see if in spite of that we can't get a good group on the paper. This first load that we're going to be trying out is using Shooter's World 4350 powder, a 43 grain charge with 110 grain Hornady A-tip bullet. Starline cases, Winchester large rifle primers, and our overall loaded length is 2.820 inches. All right, settled in. Put a group on the paper. Oh, that bolt is nice. Rolling right along with our load development here, we're going to swap over to Vitavori N160 powder, a 41 and a half grain charge with a 95 grain Burger Classic Hunter. Starline cases, Winchester large rifle primers, and our overall loaded length is 2.720 inches. By now, you guys know the drill. So we're back at the bench now and after crunching a bunch of numbers and going over the results and tediously measuring a lot of different groups that we fired through this rifle, we've got some results here. And right now I'd really encourage you guys to head on over to LoadData.com, check it out, type in Handloader TV into the search, pull up the 6mm Creedmoor uh, load data there, and look at all the results we got. All the results will be posted on that website. For now, we're going to take a look at the best results we got, though, starting out with the factory ammunition. And first up, we were using Hornady. This is their, their Varmint Express factory loaded ammunition using an 87 grain Hornady VMAX bullet. We got a standard deviation of 26 and an extreme spread of 88, so a little bit high there. Average velocity was 3,188 feet per second, an average of five shots as usual. And those five shots grouped into 0.53 inches. So overall, really good results. And we had consistent um, sub MOA accuracy with all the factory ammunition that we tested in this rifle. I did some shooting with various different types. Consistently very accurate. The next ammunition that we tested on camera was the Black Hills ammunition. This is Black Hills Gold using 103 Hornady uh, ELDX. 
and a standard deviation of 14, an extreme spread of 34, and an average velocity of 2,862 feet per second. And those five shots grouped into 0.53 inches. So very good results from the factory ammunition, and this rifle was consistently shooting uh, under or around half a minute of angle. Jumping over to the hand loads, we're going to see that accuracy improve even more. The first load that we tested out was using Shooter's World Precision Rifle Powder. This is very similar to uh, Hodgden Varget. Using a 39 grain charge, we got a standard deviation of 18, extreme spread of 46, and our average velocity was 3,341 feet per second. And that grouped into 0.37 inches. So a very good group from this rifle. And uh, overall, the powder performed very well across the entire range of charge weights that we tried. This was just the best group. You can see all those on load data if you care to see what the best and the worst was for the range of charge weights we tested. The next load that we went ahead and tried is using H1000 powder, a 47 grain charge with a 108 grain Hornady ELDX bullet. Starline cases throughout the testing, they performed very well. Standard deviation of 17, extreme spread of 45, and an average velocity of 3,064 feet per second. These five shots grouped into 0.35 inches. So very good. This would be a good choice for a long range load or that kind of thing, a little bit of a heavier bullet. It'd be a great choice for, you know, on, on deer or even antelope, something like that. And it would be very flat shooting. Rolling right along. We went on ahead and tried out Shooter's World of 4350 powder using a 43 grain charge. This is getting up there towards the maximum charge weight. Uh, standard deviation of 4, extreme spread of 12, and an average velocity of 2,919 feet per second. Now the target that we're going to show you, the target that we filmed on that day, grouped into a .52 inch group. Now overall that's nothing to sneeze at, it's pretty good. But I did test this load multiple times on multiple different days, and sadly a lot of that testing was off camera. But I also managed to get a 0.35 inch group size using this powder. And overall the powder performed really, really well. Consistently low extreme spreads and standard deviations in this cartridge. And that's something that I've kind of seen in testing Shooter's World 4350 powder. It's very consistent and uniform in burn. As a matter of fact, in handloader issue number 343, Rob Bear did a propellant profiles on that powder, and he experienced the same things. So if you want to learn more about that particular powder, I'd highly encourage you guys to check out that magazine. Lots of good information in there from Rob Bear in it. Now the final load that we tested, and it's kind of ironic because it's always the last load that you test that is the best. We tested 40 loads in this particular rifle, and this is legitimately the 40th load that we tested, the last one. This is using Vitavori N160 powder, a 41.5 grain charge with a 95 grain Burger Classic Hunter, a personal favorite bullet of mine, standard deviation of 11, extreme spread of 29, and average velocity of 2,955 feet per second. Nothing to sneeze at there. And this grouped into a 0.31 inch group on camera. Now I actually tested this load five shots at a time over and over and over. I actually shot this load six times, which equals a total of 30 rounds. And the best group I got out of that was actually a 0.2 inch group. And unfortunately, that wasn't the one we captured on camera, but it, the rifle did perform. So really exceptional results with the factory ammunition and even better results when we took some time to hand load and tinker with the powder charges and try various different bullets. Very impressive. As we come to a close with this particular video, I think the results really do speak for themselves. As far as the accuracy of the rifle goes, there's no questioning that. The overall performance we got with our hand loads, the equipment we used, everything was top notch, without a doubt. There are a couple things I do want to point out about the rifle. Um, I was a little bit worried initially when it showed up and it had this thinner recoil pad. I thought, eh, it might not work so well. Six millimeter Creedmoor doesn't recoil that much. And honestly, I didn't even notice a difference between, you know, a thicker recoil pad and this thinner one here. The recoil was very manageable, very pleasant, especially with the addition of the V4 muzzle brake on there. 
So overall performance there, very good. The action feels wonderful. It's just, it's on ice, it works fantastic. The Zeiss scope performed very well, it tracked very well. We actually did get some time behind this particular setup. Shot out to 840 yards with it. Scope tracked flawlessly, parallax works great, it's spot on. No issues there, and uh, overall I think as a whole, this is a fantastic package. Cartridge, combination, the rifle, the action, everything's just working really well together, including our hand-loaded ammunition, and even the factory ammunition performed very well. So I don't really have a whole lot more to say other than it did a fantastic job, and I am overall impressed. I would encourage you guys to check it out for yourself. Um, these rifles are kind of expensive. Um, I don't want to quote you a price because a lot of it depends on the options you put together and what kind of stock you want, what kind of optic you want. There's so much that goes into making these rifles. I would encourage you guys to head over to Altera Arms' website, build a rifle for yourself, give them a call, talk to them, see if this is something that's within your budget and if it's something you'd be interested in and actually want to pursue. It's always fun to just tinker around and see what's out there and put a rifle together and uh, find out if it's in your budget. So on that note, thank you so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. I invite you guys to go ahead and give us a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you're notified when we post our next video. And as always, if you have any questions or comments or anything you want to add to this video, be sure to leave those in the comments below. I do my best to read and respond to every one of those. Sometimes the responding part is a little bit difficult with the amount of subscribers and comments we get, but I do my best. So thank you so much, we appreciate it, and we will catch you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.